Welcome to anyone watching, it's Craig over at mysimpit.co.uk and welcome to part 3 of the front dash build. In this video I'll be looking at the frame design that I chose which is the free plans put online by Dimebug and I'll be looking at the modification of them so that they work for my particular Simpit. Let's buckle up. So in the last video we looked at uh, plans available online uh, for building the front dash and the ones I've gone with are those by Dimebug. Um, so what this video really is about is looking at those plans and how I would adapt them for my specific simpit and, and how they could work in that respect. So what we're looking at on screen now is one of the uh, 3D pictures in Dimebug's assembly guide. It shows the first nine parts put together and this is the point to which I'm looking to build mine now. Uh, later on I'll be looking then to fill, build the main fascia here which will have all the instruments in but this will represent the the initial part that I need to complete. So what I really wanted to do was put this design, the original design, into SketchUp and just have a look at it and get an idea of, of how it would work. So here are the plans for the the original Dimebug plans. So in putting this together, I was then thinking, well, how will this marry up to the left console that I made previously, which I also at the time designed that in SketchUp. So if I put the two together, I can start to see now that there are a number of changes I will need to make to this front dash so it will marry up to this left console and it will work for me. So we'll have a look in a moment and start talking through the various changes that will need to happen. So as I start to think through the, the changes that I would need to make to this front dash, I've pulled this information into an Excel sheet where I can look at what are the original dimensions for the height, width and thickness of the various pieces of wood and what are therefore the adjusted dimensions, how do I need to change them to marry up and fit with the left console I've already built and then given those adjusted dimensions what does that mean as changing dimensions from those that were there originally and you can see for that information it's in relation to each of the first nine parts that I've renamed as you can see here. So if we bring this back up and we can start to have a look. I've done a change log to cover nine main changes I'd be looking to make to the front dash. So as we start to go through these, the first one's going to be the height of this overall front dash, the frame, because it's just not high enough at the moment. So when I, as I said here, when I designed this left console, the height of the inner part, which is just this bit here, uh, was matched to what would be that of a standard chair at 450 millimeter. So uh, when I looked at the front dash here, it actually worked out oddly enough that I'd need to increase the frame height by exactly 100 millimeters so it would then marry up correctly with the left console. So the 100 millimeter increase sort of takes this point here just slightly above this because it needs to be a little bit higher than this bit here because there'll be um, various panels mounted into this. And in making that change to the height, that impacts parts five, six, seven, and eight. So the, the base sides here, the back, and then obviously the various rudder sides here and here and the outer sides. So the second change was an alteration to parts 7 and 8 which are the rudder sides left and right and the outer sides left and right. So as you can see this comes down at an angle 
whereas my left console the end was straight so it's a small alteration it just means that on these pieces here there'll be no angle to the edge anymore it will be straight and therefore it will sit flush when pushed up against this uh, left console the third change was an alteration to the depth uh, the rudders I'm going to use the Satec rudder pedals and I just found that when you extend them in either direction fully and press the toe brakes down there was an obstruction at the end here that you, you just wouldn't be able to have that free movement so by extending uh, the depth by 30 millimeters, uh, it'll ensure that the rudders uh, are free to move as needed. And in terms of width, the overall width's not been altered, but the width of this center piece here. So um, this part one, which is a stick and fuse base, I've increased that by 18 millimeters. So I didn't want to extend it much more because I didn't want it to impinge upon the gap here and here of where your legs would be sitting and, and whatnot. But looking at the original plans, I just did not feel that there was a great enough width inside of here for the Tissel panel and the circuit breaker panel. So I'm not having, so when I do the, the, um, the fuse board, the circuit breaker panel here, it's not just a placeholder, I'm going to have components behind there so if we just have a look at the width that's 110 millimeters um, of, of space to use well if we just jump across into Inkscape where I've been doing a little bit of scaling if you say take um, the fuses here and we would just get a rough idea of measurements Straight away, that's it, it's short by a whole centimetre. That's about 119 millimetres that we need there. So, so yeah, that will be one of the changes to, to make that wider. So the fifth change will be in relation to the thickness of, of the MDF used at different points. So we can see in the original... Uh, dimensions here it's pretty much 18 mil a standard and that definitely feels right to me because the frame's got to have quite some strength to it but the rudder sides left and right uh, was set originally at 5 mil but I do want to increase this I do feel for me taking it up to 9 feels about right and then the shelf here uh, that's set at 10 millimeters now I've been playing around with Logically, it makes sense to put that to nine, actually, from the point of view. I'd be cutting all of this out of two main pieces of wood. One would be 18 mil thick, um, one would be nine. But I do think that that would be best as 12. So actually, I'm going to be cutting this whole thing out of three thicknesses of wood. Nine mil, 12 mil, and 18 mil. But yeah, I do think that will give that shelf some extra strength because in my design there will be certain things sitting on this shelf the sixth adjustment will be added support blocks so if you imagine this build and it's sitting it's, I mean it, it's on the floor I've not got it mounted on any sort of wheels to, to move it around I could just picture that if you had to move this as you pulled it I could just imagine that this side here sort of pulling away and, and somehow breaking. So I am going to add a block in here that will just ensure it will hold it together and the same on the other side. Just in here. So here and here. And this is where I will give a shout out to my father-in-law, Phil, because... Obviously he's done quite a lot of uh, woodworking previously so when I've put together this sketch up plan and I've gone and had a chat with him um, from his experience in woodworking obviously he's been able to call out things like that that ensure that the new frame is, is sound. So for the seventh change um, it really is just about the method of assembly that in the original instructions it talks about either glue or screws. I just want to know that if I need to disassemble and reassemble it a number of times over for whatever reason that I'm not going to be causing damage to the frame so 
I do plan to use brass inserts to assemble it. And then for wiring considerations, there's a few bits there. The, the first bit will really be about this uh, stick and fuse base here. And you can see it as in the original design. If we can come over to this now, uh, and we can see a slightly modified version I've done where obviously you've got the mounting holes for the bottom of the, the HOTA stick. But what I really want is to have this uh, rectangular hole here so then the USB lead that comes out of the base of the HOTA stick will feed through there. And then on the underside, there's a channel within which um, the main USB wire can be carried, just so the, the wiring's neat and you've not got cables sort of floating around or, or coming to the side where they're visible. And then the other change would be at the back here, although it's see-through in the way I've drawn it here, this whole back piece runs flush with the, the bottom of this here, so um, I will cut a rectangular cutout here, so wiring that comes through here can, can pass through that. And the ninth, and pretty much the, the final modification, will just be that for the part three, the fuse fascia here, that there'll be a number of holes that will run down each side, but a number of those holes will be countable holes, so it means that a number of screws will attach this fascia to these side pieces here, but then they will sit completely flush with the surface of the wood. So then the other holes that are available mean that when the circuit breaker panel's done, or the tissel panel, that can then attach on top. So as we can see, there's a number of changes I plan to make. Um, nine clear ones there and to be honest i probably on these side bits i won't have this hollowed out um quite happy to just have it as one unit so i've sketched up the front dash with these changes if we just come across that's what it would look like now so we can see with the base of the hotus controller on where the USB lead would come out, it would go into that hole and then it would, the wiring would run right through and come out of this hole here and then there's a new hole I've created in the back piece for that wire to come out but also the wires from the rudder pedals we can see it's got the depth needed now for the rudders to be fully moved and extended Shelf and sides here and here are stronger. I've not drawn in the supports yet, but they'll be here and here. And it's got the extra height. So going back to some of these um, key measurements here, and you might wonder wh why the one adjustment of height shows us 30 and then it comes over here. Remember that these dimensions are as you look at the PDF file, not necessarily as a piece of wood would be inserted into here. But you can see that We've got 100 millimetres of extra height, which is on these bits here. We've got 30 millimetres of extra depth, which shows as listed here, but that's the extent to which it comes out the back. We've got the extra width of this bit here, so that the tissel and circuit breaker panels, I can more easily get all the components into that area that I need. And then a slight change to the thickness of the wood, both on the shelf and the left and right uh, rudder sides here. So there's the front dash all modified as needed. And then if we just have a look now and see how that will marry up to the left console that's already made. And it looks like it should just work all fine. Once we've got the panels mounted on here, that'll take it up to that height. So it should sit exactly flush. And obviously taking that angle out there means that they sit against each other correctly without a gap and then all of the other changes that we've mentioned should all make it work so so thanks for watching and in the next video we'll be having a look at starting to get the wood and and to actually cut everything and see what we can do to assemble it together